and today I'm doing a faux lock tutorial. Now, I just got done with these faux locks and I am obsessed with them, y'all. I'm so obsessed. This is definitely my new hairstyle. I will be doing different variations of this style, but for the most part, I'm faux locking it for a while. I absolutely love faux locks. I've been obsessed for a while, but I wanted to do them in a way that doesn't break off my hair, doesn't feel heavy, doesn't weigh me down, doesn't take too much time. So I really came up with this method uh, with a combination of different things that I've seen and it is a new method. I haven't seen this exact thing done before so um, yay for that. Um, and it turned out great and I'm really really happy to share this with you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, just give you guys a little brief overview of what's going to be going on. So basically this is crochet um, locks. This is the Bomba Dreadlocks. Um, in the next segment you'll see all the supplies, all the hair stuff that I used for this. But this is the Bomba Dreadlocks and usually you do cornrows and then you crochet this in because this is the crochet locks. This is meant for crochet needles. It has the pre-loop at the end and everything. It's, it's made for that. I didn't like that because, you know, basically you have the cornrows everywhere and then your perimeter is left out and the perimeter of your hair is wrapped all the way down. The edges of your hair are all stiff and they look different from the center of your hair. The center of your hair is all bouncy and flowy because of the um, faux dreadlocks and then the rest of your hair is heavy. Like I just didn't like that look, but um, I love the uniformity that the faux locks, the pre- the pre-locked faux locks give me, so I really did want to wear a style with these dreadlocks. But I did not want the cornrows, and I didn't want to do it the traditional crochet way. So that's how I came up with this. As you guys can see, I have completely left out all of my hair. I don't have anything cornrowed. These are all individual faux locks, but using the crochet locks basically so that everything looks uniform everything's long I love the length of these this is cutting the time in half for regular faux locks because the lock is already locked for you so you don't have to wrap all the way down and do all that wrapping stuff um, it does take a little bit longer than the traditional crochet locks just because of the fact that they are individuals Another great thing about this hairstyle over traditional faux locks with the wrapping or traditional crochet locks um, is that you can put this hairstyle in a ponytail right away. There is no tension at all on my edges. I just finished this today. There's no tension at all. Um, and that was something that was really, really important to me because I had a bad experience the last time that I did faux locks the uh, traditional way many differences on how the traditional faux locks are done and how I did these. I'm going to show you guys um, an overview of all the supplies and products that you would need to create the style. To talk about the things that you're going to need for this hair look. Um, I'm going to talk about the tools first and then the hair that you're going to need. The tools that you're going to need is a paddle brush. We're going to use this to brush out the hair, um, blow drying and sectioning. And then you're going to need a comb. Fairly a fine tooth comb with a really really sharp end so a rat tail comb would be best for clean partings um, you're gonna need a bunch of hair ties hair scrunchies whatever you want to call them you're gonna need scissors I actually have hair scissors these are really really good for your hair obviously but um, it just cuts everything really clean but you can use any regular old scissors and you're gonna need a crochet needle I got this for a dollar at my local beauty supply store you're going to need some hair products, just a couple. You're going to need some hair oil of your choice to moisturize your hair. Um, with this particular hairstyle, it's really important to keep your hair moisturized underneath. And then while I'm twisting my hair, I'm going to be using this Shea Moisture um, Coconut and Hibiscus Curl and Style Milk. I just like this because it's not too heavy on my hair and it also allows me, it kind of stretches my hair out a little bit so it's going to give me better grip when I am twisting my hair. And for the hair that you're going to need, there are a few different things in the hair department that you're going to need. First, you're going to need um, a bundle of hair and I just have some leftover hair from 
my last sew-in install that I did and this hair is from Eunice Hair Company on AliExpress. I do have a video about this hair. I really do like their curly hair. I have a review on my channel so go ahead and check that out. I'll put that link down in the description bar. But basically it's just regular wefted hair and this is the curl pattern. For this style, I really want my hair to look a little different than regular locks. I want to have like some pieces out, um, kind of like just a gypsy natural vibe. So um, this hair texture is going to be really nice for that. But you can use any bulk hair that you like. It does not have to be real hair. This happens to be human hair. Um, but as you'll see, the, the other hair products, that, the other hair items that I'm using are not human hair. So it doesn't really matter. I'm just using this because I have this left over, so instead of going to go buy synthetic bulk hair from the beauty supply store that's like a wet and wavy texture, I just decided to use the hair that I have left over. The main hair item that you're going to need, this is what you're going to need to buy the most of. I only have one bundle of hair and I feel like that should be enough for the style that I'm going to do, but I actually got seven packs of this. This is the um, Bomba Dreadlocks, the Faux Locks Soul. I think they have another one. That's not sold. I'm not sure, but this is the one that was on the website that I got it from. I got it from beautydepot.com, and I got seven packs of this because I didn't know how many packs I would need. Um, I'll be sure to let you guys know how many packs I actually used. But these are crochet locks, and I'll show you guys. This is going to be an individual crochet method. I'll just show you guys an example of what it looks like. It's just basically a strand. It's just basically a big tight coil that looks like a faux lock. And I like these because they're not too shiny and they're not too perfect. They are kind of jagged and they look really natural. And these have a loop already on the end. So that's what I was talking about. If you can get crochet locks that are already pre-looped, that will make this a lot easier. If not, you can still do it. But um, it's a lot easier when it already has the loop on the end. And the last thing I got, I just got one pack of wrapping hair. We are going to wrap about 2 or 3 inches of the roots to keep everything in place and so I only need one pack for that cut it up into pieces so I just got one pack of this Cuban twist hair and this is what the package looks like and then this is what the hair looks like it's just coarse synthetic hair like I said this is only used for wrapping this is not going to be like the main focus so yeah, so those are the tools that you're going to need for this tutorial. Oh, and you're also going to need a blow dryer, which is the next step that I'm about to do. I'm going to blow dry my hair with a paddle brush, and I'm going to put some coconut oil in it and get it ready for the twisting. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is just blow dry your hair out straight, which I've done right here. And then you're just going to kind of section your hair off and get some clean partings going. And then I'm just going to start on this side to show you guys the size that I'm making my two-strand twists. I'm making them a pretty good size because the locks themselves are a pretty good size. So I'm doing about a medium size two strand twist with medium size partings. So I'm just going to twist it all the way down, adding the Shea Moisture Curl and Style Milk as I go along, and also adding coconut oil to keep my hair very moisturized during this process. So you guys can see I'm kind of doing different kinds of partings. I got kind of triangles going on and they're not super perfect because I do want it to look kind of natural and this is how my hair looks completely twisted and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the extensions to the ends of my hair so I'm going to cut off my hair from the weft if you have bulk hair you don't have to do that step and I'm just going to add my curly hair to the ends so basically what that does is make sure that you do not put any added tension to your roots so you're adding it to the ends of your hair so there's no tension there. Added in your curly or wavy extensions to the ends of your real hair. It should look something like this. And I initially was not going to do every single one uh, just for time's sake, but I ended up doing every single one anyways because it was looking weird when it was every other one, which is what I was originally going to do. But I just went ahead and just did every single one. What this is going to do is basically just add softness to the hair. Um, the only thing that I do wish is that I chose a longer uh, curly extension, but like I said, this was just left over from what I had from my last sew-in, so that's why I used this. But next time I will definitely get a longer extension because this is not long enough. 
but it's still going to add softness to the dreaded look. So the moment that we've been waiting for, I'm about to go ahead and begin, which is the interlocking method with the crochet needle that I use for these individual faux locks. So you're going to need your crochet needle and you're going to need to go ahead and cut or pre-cut your um, wrapping hair. It's just going to make the process go faster and easier if you do that. Okay, so like I said, you're not going to have to wrap the whole way down. That's what makes this method uh, easier in my opinion because you don't have to wrap the entire thing because the crochet locks are already wrapped. So you're only going to need a little bit of wrapping hair just to secure the roots. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece of hair into four. So I'm going to cut it once and fold it and cut it again. So you should have four pieces out of one um, lock of the Cuban twist. If your wrapping hair is thinner than this, then you should probably only cut it into threes. Okay, so I just had to get used to um, doing them, so I just did a couple. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I did it. So basically what you're going to want to do is grab your crochet needle and make sure that the hook is open and then take your individual crochet lock um, mine has a loop on it so this is going to be a little bit easier if it doesn't have a loop then you can um, twist it yourself on there But so I'm just going to put it through my individual um, two strand twist and it doesn't matter which way you put the needle through just as long as it gets through there kind of um, in the center, but it doesn't matter which direction you go. So I'm just going to close my crochet latch, go ahead and pull it through, and so now you can see that the crochet lock can easily slide back and forth. You don't do that too much, it's going to mat up your hair, but just to show you guys, that's what you want to, that's the thing that you're trying to achieve with this. So essentially, it's just kind of like the same way that you would do crochet locks on cornrows except you are weaving it through the center of your two strand twist instead of your cornrows and it gives it a more realistic look because you have realistic partings um, you're going to have realistic roots and you don't have to wrap all the way down because this hair is already wrapped for you so that really is the major thing right there so now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this don't go too tight, you know, especially around the edges. Don't go too tight because we are going to wrap this. Okay, so now you have two things side by side. You have your crochet locks and then you have your individual two strand twist with the um, added extensions if you added that. If you didn't, then you don't, but you should still have two things side by side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of open up my lock here. And then I'm just going to kind of wrap it loosely around my two strand twist while opening the lock. So essentially it's pretty much like the lock is hugging the two strand twist. But I'm just going to go to about there. And now when you let this go. Alright, good job I did that because now I can show you guys that I wrapped it the wrong way. So it completely unraveled, which means that I wrapped it the wrong way. So I was wrapping that way, so now I need to wrap the other way. Lesson learned. Okay, so now you're just going to gonna go the other way if that happens to you. Just go the exact opposite way of what you were doing, because that means that you were wrapping against the coil. So, I'm probably not going to edit that part out, because I need y'all to see what happens if you wrap the wrong way. Okay, yeah, so even this way, this is the right way, this even feels better to me. I'm having to put even less tension on it because I'm wrapping it the correct way. So like I said, you're just kind of twisting open the coil with your index finger and your thumb, and then you're just kind of putting it right on top of your hair, and then the fake hair if you added it. And then I'm going to go back down to about here once again. And then when I let this go, bam, it didn't unravel. So 
So because it didn't unravel, I wrapped it the correct way. Um, so you get the hang of it. This is my only, my third one doing it, so I did mess up on that one. But you get the hang of it and you're wrapped the right way the, the entire time. But now you have your lock. And it's pretty secure as it is, but the roots are not neat. And the roots, you can see that there's something going on. So we're going to cover that with the wrapping hair. And we're also going to secure that with the wrapping hair. So I have my wrapping hair here. And you're going to want to take the wrapping hair. And so let's say when you cut it, it originally has blunt ends. Like, like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab random parts of the ends and tug on it so that now your ends are tapered very very important because if you try to wrap this hair or if you try to wrap any lock or anything with blunt ends it's going to unravel and that's where you have the issue of having to burn the ends to make it stay and I am not going to want to burn my hair so close to my real hair because I'm not going all the way down when I wrap so I'm not going to burn this at all what I'm going to do is wrap all the way down grabbing wrapping hair as I go along and um, then at the very end wrapping back up and then it should stay it should stay at that point um, you should not have to burn the ends when you do it that way but it's very very important to separate the ends and make sure that it's as tapered as possible so now I'm just going to take the wrapping hair and put it underneath, beside, on top, however you are comfortable wrapping. So I'm just going to put it underneath because that's how I'm comfortable. And then I'm just going to start wrapping. So just do two times around the root. Don't go too tight, especially, you know, around these delicate edges. Do not go too tight. It's, it's already pretty secure, so you don't have to go super tight. We're just worried about covering, just making the roots look more neat so I'm just gonna wrap this and I'm almost at the point where I can grab more hair because this wrapping piece is getting kind of skinny so I'm just gonna grab a little bit more wrapping hair that I had tucked away to the side And then I'm just going to continue to wrap. Now like I said, you don't have to go all the way down because this lock is already wrapped and has the wrapped look with the um, coil. Alright, so now we're kind of done with the wrapping part and what we're going to do is grab the remaining piece of wrapping hair. So you should have no wrapping hair anywhere else besides your fingers. And then you're just going to go and wrap up. Now wrapping up is what really secures this and makes sure that it does not unravel. This here will eventually be flexible. It will be as flexible pretty much as this. So just give it a little bit of time. But in the beginning it may be a little little stiff but um don't let that don't let that scare you so now it looks really 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 natural and that is what I wanted and then you see these pieces here I'm like so off camera and then you see these pieces here that are just kind of coming out that's the softness that I was talking about and when I do my whole head, you will see that that's going to be like really, 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 really pretty. I'm excited about these ends peeping through. So, yeah. So, so far I got three down. Oof, these edges need so much work. So far I got three down and I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of my head just like that. Alright, you guys. So, I'm almost done. I have three locks left. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the last three and I'm going to talk through it because I'm going to show you guys the regular way that I've been doing it and then two other ways that you could do it. So just section out the three that I have left. And I did split this into two days just because I really can't stand doing one thing for a long period of time. So um, I can't really give an exact estimate on how long it took me because I did take a lot of breaks. So I'm going to take this section, 
that I haven't done, and it's just these three right here. So I'm going to show you guys how I do it once again. Alright, so we're just going to take this piece of hair and then have your open crochet needle. Put it through. Hook it onto the loop. Close it. And then grab the rest of the bow lock. Close that again. And then pull that through. Alright, so. And then just tighten it. And then go ahead and figure out which way that it is twisting. So it's twisting this way. So I'm going to pull it over here. So what you're doing is you're just lightly opening up the coil of the faux lock and then putting it around your hair and the fake hair, just opening and putting it on top. So it's essentially just basically hugging it and hiding it. And then I'm going to do this, you can do it all the way down if you don't have the extension added. Um, I like to do it until I get the braided part of the extension covered and I let the rest go. And that's what gives me the um, pretty pieces in there, which was the look that I was going for. So then I just stop there and then now you have the lock. Your hair and the fake hair is hidden in the lock. This is going nowhere. Your hair will not pop out. This is very, very flexible. You can do anything with this. This is not tight on the root at all. I can move it any way. I can wear a ponytail the same day. It is in there pretty secure. I can pull on it and it's not going anywhere because it is crocheted onto my two strand twist. Now, so I do want to make a quick note. If you decide to braid instead of twist your parts will come out a lot neater and it will be a lot tighter on the root. I wanted a two strand twist because I don't want it to be too tight on my roots. Um, I kind of like that natural kind of look that I got with this. Um, but if you do want a tighter root and a cleaner tight part then you can braid your hair um, instead of two strand twisting. And then the crochet lock will pretty much sit on top of your root. Like see I have like half an inch of space available which I'm going to wrap later but I still have half an inch of space if you don't want that you can braid your your twist before um, crocheting it instead of two strand twisting another thing is your hair is inside of this essentially right so your hair is in there it's hidden by the faux lock coil if you have really really thick hair and when you wet it it just poofs and you're worried about your hair like basically swelling and poofing out of the lock when you get it wet then braiding would also be a better method for you instead of the two strand twist uh, the majority of my hair is relaxed so when I do get my hair wet it's not going to poof out to the point where it will leave um, the faux lock it, it's going to stay in the faux lock because it's not going to expand too much um, my roots and I have about like two or three inches of new growth that is natural because I am going natural but that's going to be covered by the wrapping hair so I'm not worried about that expanding when wet. So now you're just going to grab your wrapping hair and I have a piece about this long and just so you guys know that one pack of wrapping hair that I used that Cuban Twist was more than enough for my entire head. I actually have a lot left over so that's good. You don't want to grab too much wrapping hair because you don't want it to look too thick, but you do want to separate it, like I said before. So I'm just placing it underneath and getting a pretty good grip on the root area. And I'm just going to start twisting. Now you can twist as tight as you want. Like I said, I don't want mine too tight, so I'm not twisting too tight. And you don't have to twist too tight. Unless you want like that super clean root look, but this is just to cover the crocheted part. This is just to cover the line of demarcation 
where your hair meets the faux lock. And then wrap back up. Now this little tail piece, that tailored tail piece from the tailored end is really, really important. You want to wrap that really, really tight on your way up. So, and then voila. You have the faux lock is now completely secure. You did not have to wrap all the way down. The rest is done for you. And then that's that. So that's how I did my entire head. So now I'm going to show you guys how you can do it without adding the extension. Um, it works pretty much the same way, but you just have to wrap a little bit longer to cover all of your hair, depending on how long your hair is. So I'm just going to show you guys an example with this. I don't have an extension piece on this. This is just my real hair that's two strand twisted. So I'm going to do the same thing. Grab my faux lock extension. And then just go all the way down with this. Now, I don't have an extension piece on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep on opening. Having a good grip on it. Keep opening and keep on hiding your hair, basically. Hiding it inside of the faux lock until you get to the end and then because you had a good grip on it just kinda press down a little bit and then it'll, it'll wrap that end up that little tail piece that you couldn't get in there it'll expand it and it'll catch it like that so now you have no fly away your hair is in there your hair is not going anywhere you can twist this as many times as you'd like your hair is not gonna pop out All right. Okay, and now I already have an extension piece on here, but I do want to show you guys a different method to add extensions if you don't want to put it onto your real hair. Um, and if you want like a little bit more than just a little bit peeping through. Um, so what I'm going to show you guys is wrapping it with an extension. So this is a little bit of a different method. I'm just going to do my front piece like this. Just to add a little bit of extra wavy hair. Alright, so I have my front piece. And what I'm going to do is put my lock on first. Alright, so now that you got the lock on, go ahead and pull it. And then go ahead and do the exact same thing that we've been doing. Just hiding the hair. by opening and closing it on your hair. Alright, so I'm just going to leave this tail bit out. Alright, now we have the unwrapped lock extension. Now what I'm going to do is grab my wrapping hair and I'm going to grab a piece of wavy hair that I have. Bend it a little bit. I could probably go shorter than that. Bend it just a little bit. And then place it on top. And so you should only have a little bit in your thumb and index finger. And then this part, the long part, the part that you want to show and leave out of the lock, you're going to put that away. Put that to the side. You can clip it if you want or if it'll stay, just, just keep it away. Okay, so now you have a little bit of the fake hair attached to your lock and now you're going to grab the wrapping hair and this is a little bit more difficult that's why I didn't do it this way if you have a you know a good grip with this kind of stuff then it's good so now you have the lock the fake hair and the locking hair on one side connected and you're just going to wrap all of that once again leaving this bit out of this wrapping process All right, and then that is it, you guys. So that is that lock right there. So I have a little bit down there, and then you just take this piece, and then it's side by side with the lock. 
So that's just a little accent piece for me. I like that. So I'm going to keep that there. Okay, so we are done with the wrapping and everything. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I'm going to show you guys um, a couple other steps that I'm going to do to kind of finish off the look. First, I'm, of course, going to put some edge control on these crazy looking edges because they need help. <laughs> so what I use for edge control at the moment, uh, I keep going back to this product because I just can't find any product that works like it, even though it's so expensive. So I just use a, this is actually called a dye brush or a tint brush that I got from Sally's. And it is wet if you see it dripping. Um, I like to work with this edge control gel when I have a wet brush. It lasts longer that way. So I'm using Hicks Edges. Hicks Edges is the bomb.com. y'all so now I'm going to add some jewels to my hair I don't want to add too much but I am going to add a few so what I'm going to do is take these little these things that look like kind of like little baby toe rings <laughs> but they look like this and I just got these from my local beauty supply store I believe that they were a dollar each I got two packs but I'm probably only going to use one so a good thing about these jewelry pieces is that you can hide any areas of concern with these pieces while looking decorative. And what I mean by areas of concern, like if you feel like a piece is going to come unwrapped or you just had too thick of a piece and it's looking poofy, you can clasp it with these jewelry pieces. So that's what I'm going to use it for, like little areas of concern. And these just open up really, really easily. Alright, so here I have a little bit, um, that's too thick, so I'm just going to put this on there. I don't want any, like, super close to my face because I feel like that looks a little weird, just having, like, all these jewelry pieces around my face, so I do want to stay away from the perimeter of my face. If I have some areas of concern on the perimeter of my face, I'll just rewrap it. I'd rather do that than have all those jewels around my face. Um, I just want these to, like, literally pop through a little bit but you can add as many as you like uh, this look is completely customizable cute I live okay I'm just gonna fill the back and see if I need any okay yeah I'm gonna add one there and then that's the last of my pack of eight is this last one right here all right so I only have eight of those things in my hair but I'm loving how you know it just adds a little bit of edginess coolness to it just a little bit not not too much I don't want to overdo it so yeah this step obviously is extremely optional you don't have to do this at all but I just want to show you guys the whole process of how I'm getting my hair like this so, so now my hair is complete so happy <laughs> two days <laughs> But I'm so happy that it's done, and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving how this looks. This is definitely my new hairstyle. Forever. Alright, y'all, that completes this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed how um, thorough I was, or how thorough I tried to be with every step of the way. Um, this is a new technique. I don't believe that... This is on YouTube. I've searched tons of videos on YouTube for this and I just kind of mixed and matched the things that I saw and things that I've seen on blogs and things like that. So that's how I came up with this individual crochet method. Um, if you guys enjoy this, please thumbs up. Um, also, please leave me comments down below. I love comments. I love feedback. Uh, let me know if you guys decide to try it. Any questions that I have not answered, please ask me. Um, I just want to kind of reiterate that these are so light. It looks like I have a lot of hair on my head but it's so lightweight. Um, I did only use four packs of this crochet faux locks and if you guys have ever felt faux locks before they're really really bouncy 
and they're just really really lightweight because they're hollow for the most part not a lot of um, tension on my edges which is something that I really wanted to make sure that I didn't do um, again because the last time that I did faux locks myself I used the braid it down with the fake hair starting at the root which is having tension on the root right there and then I wrapped it with wrapping hair all the way down um, which is bringing tension from the root all the way down um, and I left that in for about 30, 40 days-ish, a little bit over a month, and it completely broke off my edges, and that was a little over a year ago. And I loved the faux lock style, I absolutely loved it, but I was just so upset with the fact that it, it, it took my edges away, like, you know, that, that sucks. <laughs> especially for us women of color, it takes a little while for things like that to grow back, especially when, you know, I've been wearing weaves all this time, so it's not really helping it. It took about a good two inches of hair away with it when I undid my twist so I will definitely keep you guys updated on this style I'll do a one month update and then I will do a update after I take it down and reinstall it I'll definitely keep you guys updated because I know that's very important like everything will look fine and dandy during the tutorial and then when you get done and you try on yourself and then a week later things unravel and yeah 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 but I'm pretty pretty confident about this style I have tested it on someone before and it worked out perfectly fine so I'm very confident with this method um, if you guys like this please thumbs up I will be doing videos every single week I have been on a little bit of a week break but I'm back at it full force so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one bye